In this video, I'm going to describe what you need to know to understand binary stars, and specifically eclipsing binary stars and their light curves. It turns out that perhaps 50% of stars that form come in pairs. And gravity holds these stars together, and as they orbit, they orbit something called their center of mass. We'll talk about center of mass in another lecture. If the stars are orbiting each other, and they are inclined so that the plane of their orbit is uh, viewed from the side from our vantage point, then we can observe them as an eclipsing binary system. This makes observing binary stars easier than if we were observing their orbit top down. Also, many binary star systems are just too difficult to see the individual stars because the stars are so far away and the and the binary pairs are so close together that even with good telescopes, we can't always resolve both stars. So if we're viewing the system on its side, then when one star goes in front of the other one, some of the total amount of light will be lost, and so astronomers observe the change in brightness that occurs. There's a couple rules that we need to observe when describing the relationships between different types of stars and their eclipsing binary light curves. Main sequence stars follow a very specific pattern for size and temperature and mass. The biggest main sequence stars, that is the most massive ones, have the largest size and the highest temperatures, for example the O and the B type stars. The K and M type stars at the bottom of the main sequence are the smallest, lowest temperature, and least massive of the main sequence stars. Red giant stars are usually very large, bigger than all the rest, but they're low in surface temperature. Eclipsing binary systems could consist of both main sequence stars, red giants, or it could have uh, two main sequence stars, a main sequence star, and a red giant. So just to summarize, a red main sequence star will be smaller, less massive, and lower in temperature than a yellow main sequence star or a blue main sequence star. A blue main sequence star will be larger than all the rest and will be higher in surface temperature. If I'm going to compare a main sequence star to a red giant, the red giant will almost always be larger but lower in surface temperature. So now let's talk about light curves. If the two stars are separated, then from Earth, as we view the system on its side, we'll get light from both stars. The total amount of light will be indicated by the brightness on this brightness versus time curve. And so here I have a horizontal line showing the total amount of brightness. Nothing is changing because nothing is being blocked at the moment. However, as time goes on, when one of the stars moves in front of its companion, it blocks out a little bit of light. And so the total brightness goes down. When the second star is completely blocked, for the duration of the eclipse, the bottom of the light curve will minimize to another horizontal line. So we went from the maximum amount dipped down to the minimum amount, and this stays at the minimum amount for the duration of the eclipse until the first star moves beyond the second one. After the eclipse, the total amount of light goes back up. And so what we're looking at here is a brightness versus time, or light curve, that's typical for when one star eclipses another, and that's what the dip looks like. What if the two stars were exactly the same size? Well, in that case, the duration of the eclipse would not last very long, and so the minimum of the brightness would come to a point. Here's what it looks like. For two stars that are the same size, one will go in front of the other, but it's a very short amount of time before it begins to move away. And so the uh, dip in the light curve will be a point. But what about the effect of temperature? Well, when you block out a hot surface, you're blocking out more light than when you block out a cooler surface. And so for main sequence stars, 
it's necessary to know whether you're talking about a ma more massive star or a, le or a lower mass star. In this case, I have two main sequence stars. The redder one is smaller, and the yellow one is hotter in temperature and larger. When the red star blocks out the yellow star, it blocks out more light than when the yellow star blocks out the red one. And so the dip will be deeper when I block out the yellow star than when I block out the red one. Over the course of the entire orbit, after both stars have been uh, able to eclipse each other, the entire light curve will include not just the first dip, but it will also include a second dip. When the red star goes behind the yellow star, and I'm indicating that here with a dashed line where the red star is behind the yellow one, we're blocking out the red star's surface. And it's the same amount of surface that got blocked out on the yellow star before. However, the red star isn't giving off as much light because it's lower in surface temperature. So when the yellow star blocks out the red one, we don't lose as much light and the dip doesn't go down as far. So here's what the light curve would look like for the entire orbit. We'll have two dips, one will be deeper than the other, and because these stars are differently sized, then the bottom of each dip will have a flat bottom. It will be horizontal. I think this is enough information to get you started on the lecture tutorial activity on binary stars. It has more examples than the ones that I showed, but you should have enough foundation to complete the activity. Good luck.